Werner Schmid is in Famagusta, in the north of Cyprus, here to conserve a fragment of wall painting in the 14th century church of Saints Peter and Paul. After a break of almost 80 years, it marks the return of art conservation to the city and offers renewed hope for its fading and neglected frescoes. I think it's an exceptional painting. It's uh, really uh, must have been an artist, a uh, very skilled uh, hand. Dr. Michael Walsh is leading the project. With backing from the World Monuments Fund, Famagusta Turkish Municipality and Nanyang Technological University in Singapore, where Dr. Walsh is a professor of art history. The painting is the 40 Martyrs of Sebast. It's a story from the fourth century of 40 Roman soldiers who were martyred in what's Sivas in Turkey today. As punishment for refusing to abandon their faith, the 40 martyrs were forced to remove their clothes and stand along the shore of a frozen lake. Only one was persuaded to renounce his religion in exchange for the warmth of a bathhouse. But a Roman guard was so moved that he removed his own clothes and joined the dying martyrs. So what we're seeing is um, men stripped to the waist, standing on a frozen lake and experiencing the agonies of a death that way. You can see they've got their arms crossed, they're shivering and in turn slowly beginning to die. If it's read correctly, it's a window to Famagusta in the 15th century. At its peak, a cosmopolitan city, international styles, cultures, languages, all uh, freely exchanging on the streets of Famagusta. That can all be found in the painting. There's every reason to believe it's an Italian artist in a Latin church built by a Syrian merchant of a theme from Armenia. If we can read the painting correctly, which we can only do if we conserve it correctly, um, we actually have a window to Famagusta from its halcyon days. Werner begins by meticulously surveying the fresco to produce a detailed map of its condition. The red areas here show portions of the plaster that have lifted from the wall, the dark red indicating areas at risk of collapse. Uh, there are certainly uh, severe problems uh, that must be faced uh, with uh, some urgency and uh, these uh, are regarding mainly the stability of the painting, which is uh, heavily detaching in some parts. Uh, this happens and can be very dangerous, especially along the edges of the fragment, uh, where uh, this phenomenon uh, can cause uh, the collapse of portions of the paintings in the near future. There have been misuses where nails have been driven into the painting to run electric cables across it. There are some holes that were filled with pure cement, uh, which also covers parts of the paintings. The church was empty for years and years and years, and so pigeons have lived in here, and their droppings are on the painting. It's a miracle that the fresco has survived at all. Over the years, the church has seen use as a mosque, a barn, grain store, fuel depot, and library. The interior walls would once have been richly decorated, but when the church was converted to a mosque in the 16th century, the wall paintings were plastered over. For 500 years, the paintings remained hidden behind plaster. Until early last century, the walls were stripped bare, all except for the small area containing the martyr's fresco. Still there are some patches of this plaster remaining on the surface that will give us the possibility to discover parts of the painting that are not yet uh, known. So this is a rather exciting part of uh, this uh, intervention. This area is very sound, uh, you can hear it, there's no problem. But when we go further left, the sound becomes more hollow, like here. 
The first job then is to secure the fresco to the wall by filling these hollows. So you drill gently until you reach the gap, the hollow area behind the plaster. The next step is to inject a mixture of water and alcohol to wet the cavity, followed by a second injection of a strengthening microemulsion. Finally, a hydraulic grout that sets without exposure to air is used to fill the cavity. Trying to distribute it a bit by pressing the surface. You see when I press here, it comes out from the hole. So behind here, it's all full. What Werner's doing is overdue and so important and so refreshing to see. Art conservation in Famagusta has until now been stalled by the Cyprus problem, which is too often made heritage a hostage to politics. And so the restoration of the martyr's fresco is doubly important. If you want to look at it as an isolated work of art, then that's, that's the success of this summer campaign. If you want to look at it as a cultural heritage question of working in places that are traditionally quite difficult to work in, it's also very exciting for totally different reasons. But doors are opening and it's good news for absolutely every other painting in Famagusta. I started to remove this uh, very horrible uh, cement fill which was uh, made in the middle of the fragment, uh, probably at the time when they set the electric wire along uh, the fresco just here. Uh, you can see even the imprint of the cable in the fresh uh, cement. It also covers in many parts along the edges uh, part of the painting. The first uh, operation will be to remove uh, the cement carefully from uh, the paint layer where it uh, covers uh, it. So you see here the painting is appearing under the cement. Having cleaned around the edges, Werner must carefully separate the cement fill from the plaster of the fresco. He then repairs the fragile edge of the plaster before cutting away the cement. Werner is now going to remove the remaining traces of the layer of plaster that once covered the entire painting. It offers the exciting prospect that, after 500 years, some hidden fragments of the painting might be revealed. If this really is an Italian Renaissance painting that has now, well, has been forgotten for generations, centuries, and now it's just coming back to life and it's about to be reinserted into the art history of Cyprus, it's a big moment. If we can do this, and we will, and if we can do it to world-class standards, and we will, we can easily get the consensus to do it again. Yes, we're conserving a work of art. In itself, that's a marvelous end. But we're showing that it can be done, which means a second one, and a third one, and a fourth one. Somebody has to go first. 
As Werner painstakingly removes the last remnants of the plaster, a new portion of fresco is slowly revealed. Remember the patch of plaster here? And the head appearing, the eyes. No. It was more or less in this area. Yeah. That covering this hand, so what? This hand is, is a hand. Yeah. He's doing this, like this one. Mm. Which can't be his hand because it's anatomically impossible. These lines, I don't. I I think it's the bottom of. I mean, the the back, the back of of this person. But I'm not sure about that. What do you think? Uh, it could very easily be a elbow. Let's no, say. I see it. Yeah. It's like that. See, this whole new character has come to life now because of the yeah, uh, the hair. Absolutely. It gives and, mm. and now it makes you realize that this very faint line yeah. is the his head. The contour the contours of, the of head. his head. So we've yes. got a complete new character. Yes, yes, yes. Wonderful. Um, this, which is wonderful. Person, yeah. It's a great place to be right now as an art historian because something positive is happening, and inch by inch the painting's coming back. So now the final stage of the cleaning process is just to uh, remove thin layers of lime in a controllable way. So one just goes over these areas. It's actually not removing completely these whitish rails, but at least to reduce them a little bit. With the cleaning completed, Werner can now begin to fill holes in the surface of the fresco, being careful to mix materials of the right colour and texture. So I fill it first up to the level of the painting, flush with the surface, and then with a sponge and spraying it will be slightly lowered. Next is the large area where Werner removed the ugly cement fill. As the fresco is brought back to life, it offers some answers to the conservation team's questions. In particular, the presence of what appear to be patches of paint on the surface of the fresco. Are these evidence that the painting was once a finished work, or was it only ever completed as a line drawing, a synopia? So, the painting is clean, all the deposits have been removed, it was dust cleaned, so I think it makes a difference. Now that you've been working on it for a week or two, that you're no longer really sure that it is a synopia. That there might be some element of doubt about that. It's not a synopia. I think it's a preparatory drawing uh, done on the fresh plaster. And these uh, patches of color, very strange, I must admit, but it's, I'm almost completely sure that it's the, what remains of the final paint layer, mm -hmm. which was done a sickle. Uh, mm. using an organic binding medium. So Which, you believe this painting was actually at one point finished? Yes, I, right. I think so, yes. Because uh, especially uh, seeing the beard of this person up there, you see the turquoise yes. base color, then a black color on top, yeah. and then you see the yellow lines of the hair. Chemical analysis of samples taken by Werner have confirmed that the patches of color are from pigments that were painted onto the dry plaster using an oil binder. It confirms that the wall painting was once a finished work. But it still strikes me as very peculiar <laughs> that, I mean, if we look at the feet of the bottom mm. character, I mean, it, it looks so unfinished. If we look up to the top one that was recently uncovered, it, it's it implies a hand, but it isn't a very mm. accurate painting of a hand or a foot. No, it's not. It's a draft. It's a draft. It's quite evident that the painter first started to draft with these light colors. Mm -hmm. You see it in some places. He sort of was searching the final line, also using more than, than one brush stroke to mm -hmm. define one line. Once he was more or less satisfied of, of the composition, he then outlined everything with this dark red color. Yeah. So this is the process of the preparatory 
draft for the painting. There's an answer to another question too. Why only this small fragment survived? Werner has picked up a clue talking to a local and his story is confirmed by evidence embedded in the wall itself. We found uh, actually three iron rods. One you can sti still see here, uh, the, what is remaining of this iron rod. Another was here, oh, I see. another was down there. So probably there were four, but the fourth I couldn't find. Probably it was under the cement fill, which was partly, which is partly remaining in this hole here. Okay. So this, uh, uh, I spoke with Hussein the other day, mm -hmm. and he said that actually here in this area there was the mimbar mm -hmm. uh, standing, this pulpit, okay. uh, as uh, when it was was a mosque. So it was pushed up against the wall, it attached with four iron attached, bars. Attached, yeah. Mm -hmm. and it held the fresco behind it. Probably. The work is almost complete and Werner turns his attention to the wall surrounding the fresco. The aim is to reduce visual distractions like holes and differences in the colour of stones and mortars so that attention is drawn to the painting itself. The last phase of the conservation intervention uh, is the aesthetic presentation so-called which consists in uh, treating uh, the losses uh, in the paint layer. There are a few points where the original plaster surface is broken, so it appears more white than the general tone of the surface. And so the aim of this intervention is to reduce the visual disturbance created by these white spots, to make them a bit darker, just with a transparent watercolor glaze. Uh, they are toned in slightly in order that they stay behind and they are not anymore perceived as white spots. After three weeks of intense work, the project is drawing to a close. There's time to reflect on what has been achieved. Once neglected, abused and forgotten, this fragmentary glimpse into Famagusta's halcyon past has been brought back to life, transformed by the skill and patience of the conservator. With this transformation comes acknowledgement, at last, of the fine hand of its creator the unknown artist who, some 600 years ago, applied paint to plaster. But more than that, it marks, after decades of neglect, the return of art conservation to Famagusta. So much remains to be done to rescue the city's art history. But if this is just a beginning and not the end, there is still hope. much more vibrant, it's much more visible. The colors have come to life, the figures have come to life. It's only now that you realize in what poor condition the painting was. This is everything that we had hoped for when, when we first started this process six or seven years ago to try and conserve this. The idea was to achieve exactly this point in time and you know this position. It's a uh, so good not only for one painting in one church, mm -hmm. but it's so good for the rest of the art, the wall art of Famagusta, because mm -hmm. now that one has been done to such a high standard, mm -hmm. there's absolutely no reason why we can't do another one and another one. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, next year we'll uh, 